Hi, Tara. Welcome to the Sisterhood. Thanks. I'm excited. Yeah, we're so yeah, we're glad to have you. <laughs> okay, so tell us about where you are in the world. Uh, well, um, I'm in Texas. I li- we live in Brenham, uh, which is smack dab between Houston and Austin. And then um, I work a lot in Round Top, Texas, which is about 20 miles heading towards Austin. Round Top, Texas sounds like a, yes. a place. Yeah. <laughs> Round Top. Move over, yeah. Brenna. Nobody wants Brenna. Everyone just wants Round Top. So I'm sure a lot of people have heard about Round Top. Okay. And well, tell us about it for those of yeah. us who haven't, because oh. I have not heard of it. So tell, just oh, give us the two okay. minute description of Round Top. Oh, two minutes. That's awesome. Well, it's only a town of 90 people. Okay. So um, we, um, our family's been there for over 30 years um, and we have a cafe there and a pie shop, but it's a um, high touristy town and we have um, Festival Hill, which is classical concerts during the summer. Like students come from all over the world. And um, of course, I don't even know if we're having concerts right now. Mm-hmm. Um we, but we're also known for our antique show. So it happens twice a year and then little pop-ups during the summer. So we just had a pop-up because we can talk about this later, but COVID started at our busiest time of the year when our biggest antique show is. And that's what we survive on for six months. So um, anyways, um, but it's a great community of creatives and uh, artists and then just it's an escape from the city and it's not like when we first moved there, you know, it really was just the cafe and a few other businesses, but man, now it has grown and you can come and stay for the weekend. And it's a, it's a great getaway. A yeah. Great I've definitely to heard of Round Top. I think it's because of the antique show. What's it called? Yeah. The antique show? It's just the Texas antiques show. Texas yeah. antique week. Should be months, okay. but it's weeks. <laughs> it's You're really fun. For it for months. Yeah. And it's really fun when a town gets a reputation for like a specific thing. And that is like, that is why I've heard of Round Top. So that's really fun. As long yeah, as it's normally, a good thing. Yeah. It is a, no, it's a, and it is a good thing. <laughs> now we get excited about it, but towards the end, I'm like, okay, well, time for y'all I'll go home and <laughs> I don't want to work anymore. So um, it's time for a little break. So, um, it, but it is amazing because I mean, just imagine a town of 90 people goes to 150,000 with 30 vendors set up and down miles and miles of road. So yeah, okay. I can picture that in, in the Texas, like flat roads, right? You've got just yeah. Texas landscape. Wait, where are you? Where I'm are you? in the Northwest. So I'm in like the opposite oh. place. Got it. Okay. Okay. So Tell us about your, your, your pie shop, your cafe. Um, well, it's a family business and I started working there when I was 12. Um, and it was a leap of faith that my parents took. Um, my dad had been out of work for years and it was in the eighties when the oil busted in Houston, kind of like it is now. And so, um, the people that own the cafe were like, Hey, um, I know you guys are out of work. So would you want to just move from Houston and come take this place over and they're like my parents were like well got nothing else to lose so hey let's do it so he loaded this up and we took over this cafe and it had two pies to start out with and of course now we have like 20 and so we didn't pick any of this we didn't pick pie we, but you know God totally <laughs> picked pie for us um not having a clue about pie and my dad had always been in the restaurant business but he had never run a restaurant mm-hmm. which is completely different so um, I've been in it forever and I owned it for about 18 years. And then um, we've had our pie haven, which is across the street, which is just a pie coffee um, shop. And, but it truly is a haven. And we've had that for nine years. My husband and I still have that. So how did you dive into pies? I mean, you obviously took the pie situation and ran with it. So how did that yeah. happen for you? Well, before we moved um, to Round Top, I was the girl that I would like create a hot box in the laundry room and make bread <laughs> and take it to church. So, and I would make cookies. So I, before we even, before I was 12, I was already making baked goods and selling them at church. So that spirit was, you know, I, was, I guess 
you know, God's like, well, you're born with this. This is your yeah, gift. You were wired for it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mean, pies are really specific. Like there's a lot of people that cook that don't make pies. And no. so pies are just its own thing. They which, are an animal. Yeah. So like, give us make a pie. Okay. Before we jump in to kind of your creativity with, with work, tell us like, what are a few really good pie tips? Oh goodness. Okay. Well, because of COVID, um, we can jump into this too, but, um, I've started doing virtual cooking classes on how to make pies because everyone's scared. Like grandma said, you have to do it this way. I was like, well, that's not how you have to do it. Okay. Like those are lies straight from the devil. <laughs> I mean, I love grandma. Don't worry. I made something of hers yesterday, but you know, like we just, that's where, well, it has to be this way. So no one ever makes it because they're too scared to try it. And like, well, my crust isn't this. Well, my crust isn't this. And I was like, well, quit overthinking it and just try it. So, um, anyways, it's fortunately a customer that we, uh, someone we went to church with gave us their pie crust from their grandmother, her, and her, but her crust was simple. And, um, then man, most of the stuff we made with pies were mistakes and like where we are now and, um, or taking something so simple and just adding your own twist on it. Like some of the pies we have are because it was made into a cookie and we're like, well, that would even be better if it was thrown into a pie crust. Um, okay. So what's an example of that? Like give okay, us a, sweet like and salty. It, it's like the, Oh, sweet. And wait, salty. What, what is it? What and salty? Salt, sweet and salty. Okay. And, um, I blame 10 pounds for it for sure. I was doing really good this week. And then I had like, <laughs> my son had a sliver and I was like, I need that sliver to go away. And I fell into sin. It's fine. But, um, <laughs> But it's like dense fudgy brownie with caramel and sea salt in a pie crust. Ugh, just heat it up uh, a little bit. That's yeah. delight delightful. delightful. Delightful and delicious at once. Delicious. 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 <laughs> that is delicious. Um, I can totally ship y'all one. There is that lucky little thing that y'all can get. We Wait, can oh, so really? anybody, any of our listeners can go to your sure. website and order this thing though. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. I'm in. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know how I would ever be on a healthy eating program in a pie shop. I just don't think I could. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't want it all the time, but man, every once in a while you're like, I just need a little sliver of it. So. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. I, I do love pie. I do love pie. I'm actually a cake girl and a cookie girl, Oh. but I know, right? Don't tell everybody, but okay. That's what but I you, do. But you have a book called Eat Pie Love. Uh, yeah, so and I think you've, in you've my made book, your I camp in pie. <laughs> I have. <laughs> well, I Tara, I want to hear. We're you know we're in this series called Work Flip, mm -hmm. and we really are wanting to help people think creatively about work because for a lot of us, we have been impacted by COVID right. or by maybe it's an unrelated situation. I mean, our our life changes all the time. And so we have to constantly be fluid and really be thinking creatively. I'm assuming COVID has really impacted your business. And so yeah. tell us a little bit about that and then how you've responded to that. Yeah, we, um, like I was saying earlier, the Texas Antique Show that happens March through April, which is the only time you really want to come to Texas because it's pleasant and um, the flowers are amazing. So and it's spring break. And so everyone was getting ready to like go. And we had, um, freezers full, like 2000 pies in the freezer. Wow. Of about oh, 15, oh my gosh. 1500 pie <laughs> shells. We're just, we're just kind of holding our heads cause we know what comes next. Well, and that's a lot of work. Like I, I just think 2000 pies. I know what it takes to make three pies. Yeah. And so, I mean, this, it takes us a couple months to just stock that up so that we can be stocking and we're still maintaining the business. And this is for the cafe and the pie haven and the mail order. So, um, so that's how that business. So there's two businesses. There's the pie haven that we run. And then we have our commercial kitchen, which I say is like the wholesale hub of things. So everything halted and there is no income. And you're like, awesome. So now what are we supposed to do with all of this, right? Um, because the cafe eventually had to shut completely down 
but my brother and sister-in-law, that's another story. They could talk about how they flipped their business all day, every day. They rocked it big time. Um, oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Fun. They're amazing. Um, and fortunately, the Pie Haven was um, all outside seating mainly. So it was still good for us. But um, on March 14th is when, you know, I, we were, we were, it was one of those, we were talking with local businesses and we're like, we just know that this is the call that's going to need to be made, but we really would like the um, people above us in the county and the state to just be like, just tell us whether the antique show is going on or not. Like, we don't want to be the ones to call this because I'm like, well, I'll do what I need to do. I really don't feel like losing all this business, but okay. And then, of course, fortunately, our governor said, we're going to shut the state down. And you're like, okay. And then, <laughs> awesome. Makes the decision easy, I guess. <laughs> it, it made it easier. It did. But then we're like, what now what do we do? And you know, you're like, okay, we had just done Dave Ramsey. Praise Jesus. I was cussing Dave Ramsey the two months before. <laughs> I'm like, no pedicures, what? And which was great for me because I was like, we can't get pedicures anymore. Um, but now I was like, okay, well, we had worked really hard to get out of debt before that. And we're like, do you have three months of business money saved up? And you're like, heck no. Um, and we survive on people leaving the city to come to our place. And then Houston, everyone is locked down and no one can even drive. Like your people are getting tickets because they're leaving to go. I just got to get out of town or whatever. So anyways, mm -hmm. we were standing in our kitchen, the commercial kitchen. We call it the bake shop at all things acres. And we're standing there like, okay, our freezers are full. We don't need to make pies. We want to keep our employees going. So we shifted quickly to curbside uh, um, what else did we do delivery which is really hard because you're in the country well it takes you 30 minutes to get to somebody's place so delivery is really hard um, but we did delivery and like we kept our doors open and but we followed all the guidelines and but let me tell you the money that was coming in was not like this is not going to pay the bills yeah. so we then um the, but the pie haven has stood its course and i was like my husband and i had that conversation though and it was a very hard conversation when he's like hey babe you might have to close the pie haven and i just like lost it because i'm like okay it's fine it's just my dream it's fine if it's supposed to be over um but that wasn't what god's plan was fortunately we got ppe money that um we weren't sure we were going to get it but we didn't we got it way after everyone else did um so um then but at this commercial kitchen we just said at the bake shop we're standing there we're like we have three thousand square feet and we can still get food so we shifted and started creating meals for people that served our community um and it was serving us well so we started delivering locally just in brenham and round top and um I, it was i never had met most of these people brenham's not a big town it's bigger than Mount Top, but it's a town of 20,000. But I had never met so many of these people that are coming to get food from us now. And they were just like, it was mama's going, I'm sick and tired of cooking food and nobody could go to the grocery store. So it was, it was pretty amazing to me to watch um, how God flipped everything for us. Um, and we just walked faithfully in it. And it was a dream that we had had years and years ago to do this first but we never had the time hmm. but now we had the time because god created the margin and then he opened up this door to follow a dream during covid which is it's crazy i think that is that is so interesting so you created dinners or lunches yeah. or just i guess I'm, i just want to clear yeah. a picture of like what did you create and what are people coming to get well um being pie and yes i like cake and all of that um with the pie haven i always had to be real limited on what we could do because that was always like stay in your lane don't start adding cakes don't start adding these things like you do pie and if you do pie then you can add cookies and call them pie witches with ice cream with you know or you can add muffins but you got to make them out of pie muffins and you you know use the recipes that you've got so um but then we also have savory pies and so i was like okay well, well let's start promoting that 
hey, you can just come get a savory pie with a pie. And then that's a quick dinner. And then we're like, let's make casseroles that can feed a whole family that you don't have to, it's already done. Kids are working with, mamas are working at home and they can just throw it in the oven. And for 30 bucks, you can feed six to eight people and you get dessert. So we've been making, which it's been so great for me is that I get to experiment and create new things that I've always wanted to do. But because of the way that the cafe was set up, because it's small, the Pie Haven doesn't even have a kitchen. So I never had that opportunity to use that side of my creativity. Mm. Um, and so I, daily I get to be like, oh, this is the menu for today. And I, I've loved it. And also because we created something new and I first we started doing it Monday through Friday and this old girl's like, oh, mama can't handle that. So we shifted it down to Wednesday through Friday. Um, and it's, it's all of our employees we're able to stay on. Um, we, our hope has been to just, I say just, I don't love that word, to feed 75 to 80 families a week. And we've been doing that. Um, and, and, and the relationships that we've created um, have been so wonderful. And they've just been so supportive of us too. And, mm. and it's just us being in the community for so long and people knew the cafe and the pie haven and you know how it's like that out of sight out of mind like it's only 20 minutes away oh hi it's a child scared the <laughs> I, i'll talk to you in a minute okay moms right yeah no i totally get that totally does my chromebook <laughs> count no yes it's chromebook. Because we, i yeah we just <laughs> had the no nine hours on mm -hmm. minecraft yeah. today okay and so of course i'm the spawn of satan does the chromebook <laughs> count I don't care. Just go. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I just totally did a bad mom thing, but I'm like, whatever. Oh, where are my children right now? They're watching TV. Okay, I we're know. good. Yeah. yeah. I, and it's hot as cake outside. So anyways. Yeah, it's just that is so fun to shift. Uh, that is so fun and, and really creative. So I'd like to get into a little bit of how do you spur that creativity in yourself? Like how, how do you find that? Because I think that's one of the questions people are asking. Yeah. Is there in this new, whatever new position they're in, right. they're asking, well, how do I get creative about this? And how do I know what's going to work and what's not? And, and then how do I go forward with that? Yeah, we don't know. Like we just have to try it. Um, I think we put so many, or I would too, like all the things that I'm getting to do right now are things that I've always wanted to do. So I never created the margin. I never made it where I could even go do the new thing that God's wanting to do that God put in me years and years ago. Um, and the things that I was doing pre COVID were like, Oh, I was recording my podcast. I was launching a book. I was doing cooking videos. And then, um, other things like that. And I was like, those are all great things. But I've also gone back to like, well, I have this opportunity now. Um, recently, I've told myself, I think you might have been a little on the lazy side. And maybe it's not that I was lazy. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you. Got me popcorn. So sweet. I love you. Both Snacks. Thanks. Um, God bless. <laughs> Um, and that's it. Like you have your children interrupting you in Zoom meetings, right? Whatever. This is the new normal. And I don't want to go back to the old normal. Like what if this is your second chance? What, what if you took money out of the situation? Like, I think that's the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. Just take the money out of the situation because that's your biggest limiting belief. Well, I can't do it because we can't afford to do that. Well, how do you know? Cause God's way bigger than that. And, um, so what is it that you just like, what is that thing that you're just like, I just want to go do this tonight. I just, this just totally brings me joy. And if it is writing a book, launching a podcast or, um, doing virtual kind of classes, if it's writing a Bible study, if it's pursuing oils, like I've done young living oils for so many years. Well, now I'm like, okay, I'm going to rock this whole oils thing. And it's not a side hustle. This is me following God's favor. And I think if we could maybe also take out the I got to hustle. I'm like, no, man, just follow God's favor. 
And um, that is going to grow any kind of business dream or hope that you've had um, bigger than you can even imagine. So um, I don't know if that even remotely closely answered your question at all, because um, I think it's such a huge question. And it's almost like you would want to sit down with each individual person and be like, okay, like, let's take money out of it. Let's take, um, how are you going to take care of the kids? Don't worry about that. Like, God's going to work out all those details. He's already worked out all those details. What is that thing that it just brings you pure joy? If it's creative, that doesn't mean you can't make a sustainable living on it, right? I think that's another thing. People just think they can't make a living being a creative because you're like, well, no one's going to buy my artwork and no one's going to be buying my paintings. But have you even given it a chance? Have you even tried it? So. So I'm hearing a couple of things as you're okay. talking. And um, one is that you were standing in the kitchen and you said, we, so you weren't okay, alone. Yes. Never. Was that you and your husband or you and your husband and other Me. people? Yes. Yeah. Um, everything, never alone. Um, I struggle with that whole, like, go to God first, but I always, I don't always go to God first because you're like, well, God told me this, but I didn't pray about it, but God told me this. But um, I know that, you know, I can just take it to my husband and I work together. We've worked together since we've been married. And um, we have a great team that's worked with us at the Pie Haven, at the bake shop for most of the people have been there since day one. So nine to 10 years. Um, so those are your people that, you know, I'm like, hey, what do you think about this idea? Mm -hmm. And those people that you're surrounding yourself with should be like, yeah, I mean, if that is what God's telling you, or if, if you, like, they should know you enough to be like, oh my God, you would be so awesome at that. And um, so those ones that are like, well, I know there are people that speaking grace and truth at the same time is really hard, right? Because there's a lot of us that are just gracers and a lot of us that are truthers, but to be a hundred percent both ugh, is really hard. Um, so just speaking truth into each other and maybe not, if you're going to be someone that's going to say, build someone up and encourage someone in this step back for a second and listen to everything they're saying. Maybe if it means you have to close your eyes and just like, listen to what their heart, um, is speaking and don't say no, don't say anything. Let them share their dream. Um, and through that go, yeah, I'd love to walk alongside with you. I'd lo love to pray about it with you. It might not look like this right now because I, I kid you not, most of the things we've thought of, I'm like, oh, well, God did it way better than what, but he put that first tiny mustard seed in, right? And then down the line, you're like, that's the best darn dream ever. And you know, it's also like, it's not over anytime soon either. He's just getting started. Yeah, so I think that it's important for women to hear that it was a process for you that involved other people and other people's input. Yes. Um, but also, I liked when you were saying, uh, maybe to the listener, have somebody sit with you and ask you questions about things like, okay, if money wasn't a factor, yeah. or if childcare, <clears throat> excuse me, if childcare wasn't a factor. Yeah. How would you be approaching this? And yeah. so for women to consider, okay, who can I talk to that is maybe going to help me get over my own mental hurdles yep. to get to that point of creativity may be really key. And so I just want to point that out to our listeners to be thinking about who could that be. And then there's also that marriage element too. Yep. So you and your husband work together. Not all of our listeners do, but you must have conversations a lot about making decisions around business approaches and money. And do you find in your relationship that you approach things differently? And if so, how do you manage those? And if not, do you have any words of wisdom to women who maybe do come in to those conflicts with their husband about how to manage the kind of decisions as they're thinking about income? Oh, this is a... Ugh a doozy one right here um so i'm the well my husband i think he's a visionary too we both are visionary but i'm like okay let's go <laughs> and let's do this and 
we'll figure it out as we go. But then you have the husband going, you know, reeling me back in and going, okay. Even though his biggest thing is if you take money out of it, but his biggest thing is to like, okay, he's very slow, his process. And like, I think that's the biggest thing I've learned about my husband in the, we've been married for 14 years. Um, and mind you, I was previously married and he was previously married and we both knew exactly what we didn't want. I didn't care if he had blonde hair and blue eyes anymore. Um, I just wanted him to be a man that provided and loved me for me and took care of our family and loved the heck out of Jesus. So um, when you could shift your perspective a little bit about, you know, this is how you really want your husband to be. But um, he, um, like, will we argue a lot but even it's not arguing like my oldest he braden he always like were you and dad arguing i was like no you're just having a conversation you know he feels this way i feel this way and that's okay we can agree to disagree we can still keep moving forward and agree to disagree um because it just will look differently and um i've also given up like i've also been like yeah sure like because i've taken the whole money thing out of things when he does things, I'm like, I'm not going to worry about this because he is so um, secure in whatever, like this is his gift, right? So whatever your husband's gifting is, um, and if you don't know what your husband's gifting is, maybe step back and go, I mean, maybe you need to do that. Take a little inventory, like this is how my husband rocks. This is where my husband leads really well. And so um, my husband leads very well in um, conflict. Um, and in finances and in research where this girl that likes to just go hit by he's researched for three years and i'm like for the love and um i i think that us we also have to take a break in working together all the time because that is um a big hindrance in our relationship we've always worked together and there was a good six months where we didn't work together and man we both were like i miss working with you i miss standing next to you um we've got to do this together because we are way better together and the last two months rick has that's his name rick has come to me about finances and so now he's more like okay hey we have this much in our accounts we have a tiny bit more debt let's lay this debt off and then he asked me like how much do we do and he asked me this yesterday i'm like and i'm still a safety girl because of my past experience with finances where i'm like well maybe just pay this much and but we talk it out now i go to him which is this is very hard to um, for buying merchandise and i have to ask him not ask him i tell him and we talk it through Maybe you're not asking your husband for permission. You're just talking it through with your husband. And it seems like you're asking for permission and he's like, no, shut you down real quick. So then you get defensive. Maybe, I mean, that's how it is for me. So I'm working on me. Hypothetically. I mean, I'm just saying, maybe <laughs> that's what it is. <laughs> but for him, he's the, when I was saying earlier about like, don't say no, don't say no right away and let the person speak and have their feelings um, or have their emotions um, and their thoughts because shutting people down, hypothetically speaking, you're just like, then you just crawl in a hole and then you don't get anywhere, right? And maybe that's what people are, um, women are struggling with right now that they, someone said no immediately. And I'm like, wait, just because someone says no doesn't mean you can't do it. It just means you need to look at it differently. Just bend a little bit on that, so you're on this path, we'll just bend a tiny bit differently, you know? Um, just imagine you're a tree and you're like, oh, that foundation is sure getting, you know, pulled a little bit right now. And man, that branch broke off. Or, oh, I just need to bend a little bit. Or it sure is windy right now. So um, <laughs> I think that'd be a great imagery to think about yourself when you're like, how am I feeling about this conversation with my husband about this new opportunity for me um to go live my dreams and to do my dreams but do them together um yeah, yeah it never works very well when you just operate in a vacuum <laughs> when you i mean it just doesn't you just can't when you're in a marriage you have to have both people on board so yeah. figuring out how to do that how do you 
come to the table and really listen. And, and I think even, I mean, having even parameters around like, okay, I'm going to let you talk for five minutes and I'm yes. just going to listen and not say yes. anything. Or, and then I'm going to talk for five minutes. And then if you could listen and not say anything. And then that way we both feel heard. And also we repeat back to the other person what we're hearing. Here's what I hear you say. Here's what I'm hearing you saying. Yeah. And th- I mean, those are really helpful things when we're trying to navigate a difficult topic in sure. regardless of what it is, but certainly around money and business decisions is a yes. huge one. So that's really helpful. Well, Tara, um, you have a new book out called Eat Pie Love. Tell us just a little snapshot of what people can find in the book. Um, I would say that the Eat Pie Love is um, a 52 devotional. It's kind of like a timeline of my story up until now. Um, And it has snippets. The devotions are short because like... I mean, we have, we've been doing this for 30 minutes and how many times has my child come in here? So small devotions, like it's not overwhelming and they're really about like street level, not street level because you can't handle it, but street level, like this is what it was like today. And, um, everyone, most people could relate to the stories. Um, and then there's the, um, illustrations and most of the things I did, I just, you know, I would just be, if I would listen to music or I was reading something or I was listening to somebody, I would just kind of have these visuals. And so that's how they all started with the visuals. And then I just kind of wrote about them. And of course you had to have pie in there. So we added in recipes, not a bunch of recipes because I'd like to do a cookbook next and maybe that'll have more recipes. Oh, super um, fun. Yeah. But it was a, it was, you know, it happened right before COVID. So it just. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, We've heard that a lot from people. (laughs) Well, Tara, it's a really fun book. Alex and I were talking about just visually. It's Mm -hmm. even a really fun book. I it's beautiful. The cover's beautiful. The inside's beautiful. So well done. And thanks for coming on today and telling about your, just a little bit of your story and also how you're adapting in this season. It's really helpful to hear. So oh, we wish you, you the best, Tara. And thank we you. just, yeah. And we're, we're going to be looking for that pie in the mail. Okay. Yeah. Just <laughs> send me your address. I'm, I'm on it this week. <laughs> oh my gosh. I would love that so much. All right. <laughs> well, have a great day, Tara. Thank you. Y'all Bye. Bye. Bye.